let's just say that if someone had told my mom and my siblings back then that I would venture into like the fashion world or beauty industry, they would have said it's a lie. I have, I'm the only girl, I have four brothers, so I grew up a tomboy, it was seriously bad. And then I would say the, um, I mean, once in a while, there was this primary school, secondary school part, and then my mom tried to force me into maybe to make me more girly. But for me, when I actually picked interest in it, I would say it would be in university. And I owe it to a couple of friends of mine in Uniband that would force me to come and do their projects for them or catwalk their outfits for them. And I think the first pattern that I won, that actually I was invested in, <laughs> was Miss Hotlegs <laughs> in wow. Ben, yes. So I think that's the background. And then from there, I went on to um, modeling with Beth Models Africa, and then tried in 2017. That was like, like my first major pageant, and then I won that. Um, I felt excited. I felt, um, I don't want to say overwhelmed at the moment, but it was, it was a lot of feelings. It was like a roller coaster of different emotions running through my body at that time. But most of all, I would say blessed because it's, it's a journey that I've been on for a while and I have made a lot of sacrifices for this um, crown. So I felt blessed that all my effort and all the hard work I had put together were finally yielding the desired results that I wanted. I was working towards something, but I wasn't sure what it was. I knew that I wanted, um, should I say, a platform to push out what I wanted to work, push out my advocacy. And when I heard that they were doing the Miss Universe pageant on its own, it seemed like the perfect opportunity for me. And when I won it in 2017, it was the feeling was unbelievable. Like I actually froze on stage, but people may not see that, but I froze for like two seconds. It was unbelievable. And I am grateful for that um, experience and that opportunity because it exposed me to um, a lot of things. I learned a lot on that journey. Yes, I wasn't, um, like I said, I, I didn't expect it. It was like a complete shock. And because I wasn't expecting it, let's just, let's just say that I did not, um, should I say, prepare myself, myself for some things. I did not put some things in place. I wasn't, um, I'm not sure how to put it. I wasn't fully ready for the responsibility that would come with that crown. And um, yes, that was about, all in all, it was a wonderful experience, an amazing journey. Yes, the experience helped, but I attribute it mostly to um, the work that I have put into self-development after that, um, after 2017, because like I said, in 2017, I wasn't um, where I was supposed to be yet to carry that responsibility to its fullest potential right so afterwards i went back to school i went i had an i got an mba degree from lagos business school i went to yes school of management in paris so i would say and then currently i'm working i am managing i'm the business development manager for college nigeria and i manage their operations in abuja and niger state so i would say all of that experience my education my work experience and all of that have come together to helped me become more calculated, a bit more um, deliberate about the words I'm putting out there because I have people working under me, which means that I have to be conscious about what I say and be sure that I am passing out the information I want them to get with as few words as possible. So yeah, it is unbelievable. And under the organization of Silverberg, this is the first time it's happening, right? And um, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling and I cannot wait to see how far I can take this because in 2017, let's just say that I broke a drought period. There was a drought period for Nigeria when Nigerian guests were even facing a solid international pageant. And then when I went to 2017, I placed, I got the um, Miss World Top Model and then I placed Top 15, which hadn't happened in a long time. So let's just say I broke the drought for girls in this world. Hopefully we can do that again. In this universe. Not hopefully, we're going to do that again. Definitely do that again. For the pageant industry in Nigeria, most times when you don't understand something or when you don't lose, when you don't have the full knowledge about something, it's easy to push it aside or look at it as difficult. 
And I wouldn't lie, I had also that same impression because my first time getting into pageantry, I was like, well, I'm coming from Onitia. I don't know anybody in Lagos. I don't know anybody. How is this going to work? And so I got into the system and I realized that all it takes is to put yourself out there. You have to take the first step, put yourself out there, and then let God do the rest for you, which is what I did. I, I was afraid. And even when I mentioned it, people were like, oh, uh, you don't know anybody. How are you going to? Do you have money to even bribe somebody and all of that? But then the first step is putting yourself out there, blocking out all the noise and all the naysayers, and then focusing on what you want. So this is my goal. This is what I want to achieve. And I feel this is the best path for me to achieve this. And then when you have taken that first step, I'm also going to say, put in the work, work on yourself, hard work pays. I wouldn't say there is a set formula or there is a set five steps. For me, I would say the first step is to put God first in everything that you're doing. Put God first. Secondly is to know what you want. Understand what do I want? What do I want to get out of this experience? Even if you're just going for it for going sake, that is a why. That is your why. And no one can take your why from you. So know your why. Why am I doing this? Third thing would be to be yourself. Be authentically yourself. Don't try to copy mannerisms or copy things from people and all of that. And then the fourth thing would be invest in yourself. So invest in yourself, self-development, education, sitting back and reflecting and looking back at looking inwards and seeing okay where do I lack certain things and how what are the steps I need to take to close these gaps or close these flaws and the fifth thing would be getting a support system the truth is you cannot do anything without having the right people on your side for El Salvador we're doing things completely differently there are things that I didn't know before that I know now. I have a strong support system. I have a wonderful team that I'm working with now. And we're going all out. We are not, we are crossing all our T's, dotting all our I's. We're not, we are not leaving any stone unturned. And then we're pre starting early, earlier with preparations. Yes, it's a tight time frame, but we're going to make it work. So a lot of work is going on underground preparations, trainings, um, outreaches. And then, yes, the most important part of this round is the advocacy that you're pushing out. So all of that already is ongoing. Yes, we're preparing for El Salvador, but we cannot set aside the main purpose of this round, which is the lives that are supposed to be touched through this platform. So my advocacy and my platform has always been to see, has always been focused on women, to see women thrive outside of societal boxes, to see them rise above the restrictions that have been put over them by society to help them grow to show them that their dreams are valid and to showcase to the world men and women out there everyone that women are a force for good so my advocacy has always been centered around that and that is what we're currently still pushing we're partnering with different organizations to make sure that this um, advocacy is accomplished and that everyone can see what we are doing so it's not like it's not business as usual where Things are being done underground. Gradually, all of these things will come to light. Hopefully, they'll be televised and everyone can be a part of this um, community that we're trying to do. Yes, I've faced some. There are people that do not share the same ideology as I do. There are people that um, do not like the pageant industry as a whole. There are people that think that what we're doing here is just um, putting fine face out there. And it is now left for you and me to show them that, okay, whatever it is, that you think it is this is not what it is this is what it is this is what we do this is who we are and in doing this we do this or we show them this by how we carry ourselves how we push out our advocacy and in just keeping at it and just pushing and blocking your ears ears to all the noise and all the naysayers and just taking that as well to push for what you want so that is what i have been doing and that's what i want to tell people out there that there will always be naysayers, there will always be people that don't believe in what you believe in. And just take all that negativity as well to push for what you want and then always put your trust in God that whatever situation it is that he will turn it around for you, for your own good. I'm actually super excited to be contesting this year because it's been a long time coming. The whole point of the pageant industry is to showcase the beauty of women across all walks of life and our diversity and finally 
organizations are beginning to see that in order to push out that message, then we need to do what we're preaching. And I'm so happy that um, to be contesting among such a diverse um, delegates, a diverse amount of delegates, it's, it's amazing. I, I can, I'm looking forward to it because it just showcases that as women, our beauty is limitless. Women are limitless. So they're removing all the boundaries, removing the boundaries, removing the um, all the limits, all the restrictions that have been set in place by society so that we're breaking down those walls. Women are limitless. Our beauty is diverse and our beauty is in our diversity. So that message is being pushed out and I am super excited. I cannot wait to meet my fellow um, contestants and delegates in El Salvador in November. And yes, I'm just very excited. Let me not start dancing. I yes. can't wait for it from there. I can't wait to... So normally, I'm not a makeup kind of person. So my go-to look would just be filling your brows, eyeliner, mascara, and lip gloss. That's why. Clothes. clothes. Comfort. 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 Comfort at all times, yes. I have to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, no. So in 2017, I was super into my comfort. So you'd see me outside in my joggers and sweatshirts or jeans and slippers. And now it's not going to be the same because now I'm grown. I'm grown, I'm more matured, I understand much better the industry I'm in and the image I need to portray. So yes, while I am driving or striving for comfort, it also has to be fashionable. So fashionable comfort. That I have impacted lives. That I have changed lives that people can stand up and say, Ogochi changed my life. That would be the biggest thing for me. For someone to look at me or tell people and say, I met her and she changed my life. That's it for me. There's so many qualities that come together to make the full package of a queen. But for the purpose of this conversation, I'll just list three. So I'll say empathy, very important. And then the passion, passion for the cause that you are trying to drive or push at that time. And then I would also say authenticity. Being authentically yourself in everything that you do, being original. So to every young girl, every woman out there, I just want to say that your dreams are valid. That whatever it is that you're doing or you want to achieve, keep at it. And always remember to put God first. And those dreams will come true for you. And to Nigerians, I understand the pressure. I know that there's a lot of work to be done. And I, with your continuous love and your continuous support, we will get to the desired end. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Bye. Bye.